And when I first got into the Course many years ago, I was going through a process of just trusting his student loans to pay off. It was like Jesus guided me to a particular job as a job coach. And I have a number of different clients uh, that were about 17, 18 years old. And I remember one client, I was teaching him, I was like doing a job coach job, working with the Course at night and, and before I go to work, and then doing my lesson. And I remember going in progressively to work with this 18-year-old uh, young man, and um, I would work with him, and I was training him to be a, to bus uh, tables and carry the trays, you know, in the silverware, and take it back and empty the garbage, and so on and so forth. And he kind of got, it seemed in my perception at one point, it started to get kind of like a Jack Nicholson movie. Uh, I was kind of like, like The Shining or something, I was like, holy Jesus, what is going on here? But, of course, when you're working with a course, you've got to be ready to expect that your unconscious guilt can come up in many ways. And even though I was raised Christian, you know, I wasn't going around, you know, telling people, cast out demons and so on and so forth. It just wasn't in my vernacular or my language. And so, I remember working with him on a series of, of events, and then, finally, uh, one evening I was working with him, and it happened to coincidentally be Friday the 13th. Uh, and I was like, okay, I don't really believe in this stuff. I mean, I'm not, I don't go to like the movies and put a lot of all this stuff. But I was there with him, and I remember that night when I was getting ready to start with him, I was just kind of sitting there prayerfully before we started, and he came up to me, and uh, he had this kind of weird thing going in his eyes. Uh, like some of the special effects in the movies, a real weird thing. And I was kind of sitting across from him and looking at this 18-year-old young man, and and he was like, just kind of had a kind of funny little smirky smile on this and this. And then as we went on and continued on that night, uh, his voice dropped like like three octaves or something. A deep voice, and and uh, it was a little spooky, and. Uh, with the eye thing going there too, and then I had to help him on a number of tasks, and one of them was I was carrying the trays, busing, and uh, at one point he was coming the other direction, and I felt his foot come out to like trip me, and uh, I thought, hmm, this could be an interesting night, Friday the 13th here. So at one point we had to take the garbage down, and they put all the slop in there, and you know, and it was very heavy. It's probably weighed couple hundred, two hundred, three hundred pounds. It's all this big green garbage. We had to go down these very narrow steps to, to the garbage dump. And it was very slippery and slick and, and it was very narrow so we kind of drug this heavy, uh, you know, garbage container to it. And I looked at him and his eyebrows went up and he looked at me kind of like uh, Jack Nicholson and he said, you first. <laughs> and I was like facing some fear. Uh, yes, fear was starting to um, even though I had prayed before the night to give over the thoughts and everything. So, anyway, got through the night and um, at one point at the end it kind of got really interesting where I just kept praying and looking at him and just, and just asking Jesus to be very helpful through me and how I could extend love and everything. And he came to me and he looked at me and he had kind of a uh, an arrogant kind of voice that seemed to come through, and it said, Just who do you think you are? The voice said. And I said, I'm David Hoffmeister. And the voice said, And proud of it. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, Okay, <laughs> we got some good dismantling going on here We're about the personality <clears throat> concept. And eventually, they actually got the paramedics to come and uh, take him away because the people that worked there were so spooked that they just called the paramedics. And I did see him later on in, in, a, in a school context, and, and we had a beautiful holy encounter. It was really beautiful. But when I got home that night, I actually opened the course up and I read some things from the course on trust and, and fear, facing fear and so forth. And I did ask the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, I said, I said, what exactly was going on tonight? Can you uh, give me a little bit more insight onto this uh, encounter with what seemed to be a demonic possession, I guess, for lack of a better word? And Jesus said, yes. He said, um, I'm showing you the map of your own heart. 
which I would take to mean like what we're talking about, unconscious guilt. Like this is still some guilt that you're holding on to and this was just acted out. He was saying it's not like it's really an external demon out there that has to be cast out or dealt with. It's just that, that as long as you hold on to this unconscious guilt, that you really have to go through a purification, a mind training program, and that's exactly why you're taking the course. And it was pretty early on in my use with the course, and it actually really, it really, I had to really say, okay, I'm going to really have to be sincere about this, because I have no idea what's coming in my lifetime, and it, it kind of threw me for a loop. But it's actually just a purification of, of that guilt. By the way, he mentioned uh, Jack Nicholson. I'll tell you my favorite Jack Nicholson line. It's from uh, Terms of Endearment. Uh, it had to do with maybe going out with Shirley MacLaine again in the movie, and he said, I'd rather stick needles in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was training um, for the clairvoyance center, so you have a different method of looking at things, and of course nothing's really there, but um, it's a totally different concept for me to look at it in that way, because we see it in a different way, of course, what we see is not really there, so thank you. I just wanted to add that uh, there's a section in the teacher's manual of the course. Uh, the question is, are psychic powers desirable? And, uh, you know, the course talks about how, yeah, maybe it's not true, but at the same time, as you undo the ego, sometimes these kinds of abilities, including being a part of life, they just develop naturally because you're becoming more natural, as the course puts it. The reason that psychic powers are possible is because every mind is joined. Because there's really just one mind. There's really just one of us. So uh, even in the illusion, uh, each mind is linked to the other. It's like uh, you can never really lose that communication at the level of the mind. So you know, you have like an near death experience or something. People, they, they go to the other side. They see all these relatives who have passed away before them. Uh, that's because you know, you, that's never broken. You know, the minds are always joined. And some people have an ability to just connect with these seemingly separate minds. Not that we can ever really be separate, but it looks that way uh, in the sunshine. And uh, that's why, whether it's uh, you know, the idea of being a psychic, you know, the idea of being a medium, usually mediums uh, communicate with people who have passed on. In either case, the reason it's possible is because of the fact that each mind is joined because it's really just one of us. And you can become your own psychic, too, you know, because you know, I do these Hay House conferences, right? And the longest line that you see at these conferences are people lined up to talk to a psychic or to get their cards read or something like that. And that's fine. The only problem is two months later, they have another question and they have to go see the psychic again. Uh, it would be possible for you to have the Holy Spirit uh, speak to you so clearly in the form of ideas that come into your mind that all you'd have to do is listen to the Holy Spirit and you would have an endless supply. You'd have uh, like an, you know, an endless and bottomless well that you could go to and always have the answer as to what you should do and where you should go. So that's why uh, the focus uh, of the work is really on getting more and more in touch with the Holy Spirit so that you can get the answers from the Holy Spirit directly. <laughs>